Blessings and welcome to your program Shalom Shalom with your host Dr. Marisol Pelser and my beloved husband Reverend Dexter Pelser. Dexter's not here today but the Holy Spirit is. Amen. Today's program is an um it's it's a hammer. Um it's um it's a word that is poignant. It's a word that is very important because it has to do with the specific purposes that God has for you and for me. And the name of the program is Let's Stop Doing What is Right in Our Own Eyes. In other words, let's stop doing things in the flesh. Let's start planning our lives and then ask God to bless it and anoint it. Amen. So, God has specific plans and purposes for you and for myself. But before we start the program, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your word that is active and that it transforms us from the inside out. It renews our minds and it helps us, Lord, to live lives that are full of your wisdom, your discernment, your knowledge, and your understanding as we read it, as we meditate on it, and as we apply it and activate it in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jeremiah 29, 11, we read the following. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God has specific plans for you and me, plans that he made us exactly the way we are with our personality so that we are able to fulfill the plans that he has from heaven. But it's up to you and to me to seek God and to know him in the power of the resurrection in order to walk in that perfect will that the Lord has for us and in that path that is the path of blessing, that is the path of victory, that is the path of favor in Jesus' name. Let's go to First Chronicles 28, 9. Amen. And here we read, Praise the Lord. We read the following. This is a part of the scriptures where David makes plans to build a temple. As you know, the Lord didn't allow David to build a temple because he had been involved in too much killing because the sword had been in his hand. But look what happens in this whole chapter, okay? Wow. He says, in Verse 4, he says, Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, chose me from my whole family to be king over Israel. So here we see how the Lord picked David to be the king of Israel. He picks each one of us for a specific plan, for a specific purpose. We have a determined destiny if we are obedient and if we seek the Holy Spirit, that will be revealed to us that we can walk in. Amen. Praise God. Wow. He says, if we keep reading in verse 5, He has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And look at the advice that King David gives his son. He says, And you, my son Solomon, Acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind for the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. So the Lord knows our thoughts and he knows the motives in the hearts behind our actions are we working in the kingdom to promote ourselves to get money or to proclaim the gospel amen listen to this if you seek him he will be found by you but if you forsake him he will forsake you so here he gives them very good advice he says 
keep your motives pure and your heart pure and your thoughts pure. And he says also to him, acknowledge the Lord and serve God, okay? And to acknowledge God means to recognize God's leadership in our lives, is to depend completely on God, guidance, and, and serving God's purposes with a wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. It means having practical knowledge of his character, of his purposes, so that we can maintain a deep relationship with him and his word. So that we are able, according to Romans 8, 14, it says that those that are the real sons and daughters of God are those that are led by the Spirit. So if we are in a deep relationship with God, then we maintain ourselves in the Word, in His perfect will, in His purposes, as we hear from the Holy Spirit the instructions from the Father in heaven. Because remember, Jesus never did what the Father, he always did what the Father told him to do. And we are supposed to be imitators of Christ. So we have to align ourselves, live lives that acknowledge God's purposes and that serve God's purposes. Amen. Serving God means depending on his guidance and his power to fulfill his purposes in us. Amen. That is amazing. It involves relying on God's word to determine what is right and continually praying to God to be active in our lives, hungering and thirsting for his righteousness, repenting, examining our lives on a continual basis, abiding, surrendering, walking in obedience, walking in holiness, to know and to follow Jesus in the power of the resurrection. Amen. Wow. Because we were made with a purpose. We are his workmanship. Amen. Let's go to Ephesians 2.10. And I always I get so blessed every time I read this because it encourages me. Amen. Ephesians 2.10, we read, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Hallelujah. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. The plans that he prepared in advance for you and me to fulfill in the kingdom of God. Amen. So the question is, are we going to align ourselves with God's purposes? Are we going to allow ourselves to be guided by the Holy Spirit? Are we going to be imitators of Christ? Are we going to deny ourselves? Amen. Wow. Are we going to be led by the Spirit, according to Romans 8, 14? And to be led by the Spirit, okay, means to be trained, to be guided, to be taught, to be disciplined by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And to surrender our will, our plans, to the plans of God. To put our motives, our desires aside, and to choose to walk in full obedience, just like Jesus did. When we do that, then we'll begin to see wonderful things happening in our lives because then God will start revealing his purposes to us and he will start empowering it as we walk in obedience. As we walk in obedience, we will get more revelation, more holiness, more blessing. We will walk in the fullness of the promises that God has for us. Amen. Glory to God. We have to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Jesus. You know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing, but there's a problem. But what is the problem in us that we don't do this? We need to ask ourselves that. And one of the first things that we need to examine is who are we listening to? Who are we following, okay? Who are we listening to? 
Who are we following? Are we following men? Okay? Or are we following, or are we following Christ and the Holy Spirit? Who are we following? Who takes priority in our lives? What the Spirit of God says, what the Word of God says, or what our favorite prophet or what our favorite preacher says, and to the point that we don't examine with the Scriptures what they're saying? No. We need to examine everything. We need to make sure that we have a deep relationship with the Father, that when a prophet comes to us and he gives us a prophetic word, it's a confirmation of what God has already spoken to us. Amen? Amen. And that when we hear something, immediately we can discern because we know the word that it's, it's true or it's false. We need to start relying on other people for our spiritual walk, for our spiritual guidance, for our direction. We need to go to the anointed one, Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's so important. Our lives depend on it. Amen? Our lives, our spiritual lives depend on this. Who are we following? Are we following Christ? Are we following the Holy Spirit? Or are we following men? Important. We need to ask ourselves that. And we need to make sure, me, you, Pastor Dexter, all of us, that we are guided by the Spirit, that we are guided by the precepts and the mandates of the Word of God, because our spiritual life depends on it. You know? In Proverbs 14, 12, I want to read this to you. When I read this, it convicted me. Glory to God. Proverbs 14, 12, he says, There is a way... That seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. There is a way that seems right unto men, but at the end, it leads to death. Sometimes in a human wisdom and reasoning, based on, on what we believe, there's a poor basis for determining if something is true or if it's false, or if it's right, or is it wrong, is it worthy of unworthy. No matter how convincing, how well intentioned our ideas and actions may be, if they're not in line with God's plan, with God's word, they're going to lead us to death. They're going to lead us to defeat. Amen. And we want to be stable. We want to stand firm. We want to guide. We want to protect our salvation, our spiritual lives. We want to be led by the Spirit, okay? We want to be led by the Spirit. And that is so important because God has a written revelation, the Word of God, okay? And the Word of God is unfallible, which means that is perfect, it's reliable, it never fails, and it's the source for myself and for you to determine the right path for our lives. Amen? Because the human way leads to death, but God's way leads to eternal life. So we have to understand, you and me, that we have to know the word, that we have to know the word, that we have to pray, that we have to be led by the Spirit. Amen? We have to guard our walk, our spiritual walk. We have to guard who are we listening to. Amen? And we have to test everything. We live in perilous times. Okay? Let's go to Proverbs 30, 12. And I want to read this to you. And when I read this, I was like, whoa. Proverbs 30, 12. It says here, 
those who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not cleansed of their filth. Many of us think that we're clean, think that we're pure, but we're not because we have not been cleansed. There's things that we need to repent of, bitterness, unforgiveness, jealousy, the motives of our heart. We have to ask God to, to, to show us, for the Holy Spirit to show us, is there any wicked way in us that do not please the Lord for him to show it to us so that we can repent from our wicked ways, turn from them, and then the Lord will pour out his mercy and he will restore us and he will set us on the right path. It is so important that we continually grow in the Lord, that we seek holiness, that we live a life that we're continually examining ourselves. Amen? That we don't think we're pure in our own eyes, but that we're not clean. Amen? It is so important. First of all, this word, I want to apply it to myself, okay? Before I point anybody else, I have to guard my heart, my life, that I walk in holiness before I can go judging other people, amen? I cannot do that. I have to start with me first. And then I have to make sure that whatever I hear, whatever I read, whoever I listen to on TV, that they are speaking and teaching the truth of the gospel, so I have to examine it, okay? I cannot be a person who likes this prophet and I follow them blindly. No, we cannot do that. We live in perilous times, so we have to know the word. We have to test everything, but we start with us first, amen? Glory to God. And you know, in the parable of, of the tax collector and the Pharisee, you know, you see the tax collector being so arrogant, saying how holy he was and all these things and how he tied. And he was like, so he thought that he had a pure, he was pure in his own heart, but he wasn't pure in the eyes of the Lord because he wasn't humble. But then the tax collector was over there in the corner repenting. And who did God see fit who did god was pleased more with the repenting tax collector amen so we need to have a heart of repentance and you know revival starts with the spirit of repentance revival starts with the spirit of repentance amen we have to repent from our sins amen so we have to start walking and doing the things that we think are right in our own eyes. We need to be fully dependent on the Holy Spirit and on the Word of God, okay? And, and that is so, so, so important. So I talked about the problem and why we need to make sure that we are holy and that how we need to make sure that we know what the God's purposes and plans are for us. But you might say to me, well, Sister Marisol, what's the solution? You know, the word of God says that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. The word says, knock, seek, and look. If you seek, you will find him. In Jeremiah 29, 11 says, if you seek me with all your heart and pray to me, I will be found. I will answer your prayer. So if we look to the Lord and we really seek him with all our heart, he will speak to us. He will speak to us. Amen? Wow. You know, in Proverbs 16, 9, the word of God says, in his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. So we need to look to heaven and say, Lord, what are your steps for me? What, what, what are your plans for me, Lord? I want to walk in your plans. I want to walk in obedience. I want to walk in holiness. 
I want to walk being guided by the Holy Spirit. I want to walk in the fullness of what you have for me. Amen. And it takes wisdom to walk in that, right? You know, and that's what one of the things that David was telling Solomon to acknowledge and to serve God. So that's, that's part of wisdom. But let's see what the word says in James 1, 5, okay? If we lack wisdom, what we are to do, amen? So it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and he will be given to him. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Father, to give us your wisdom, to give us your wisdom, Lord, so that we can walk in the plans and the purposes that you have for our lives. Father, we just ask you for that in the name of Jesus, Lord. And, and Lord, I pray that for myself. Lord, and for my husband and for our ministry and, and for my family, Lord, I stand in the gap, Father. Those of us that need wisdom, we need, give it to us from heaven, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray. And look what it says in Romans 8, 14. Because those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. So, Father, we just thank you that we are led by your Spirit, Lord. We're not led by what people say, by, by what's trending on social media, by the latest book. Father, we are led by what the Spirit is saying to us, what the Word of God is teaching us, Father. Were you speaking to us in our private time with you, Father? We just thank you, Lord, that we hear your voice and that we follow you, Father. We just thank you for that, Lord. Father, we just thank you for that. We just thank you for that. And we believe that we walk in that in the name of Jesus. Let's go to Proverbs 3. And, and this is wonderful. One of the things that we have to do as Christians is to fully trust in God for everything. For our salvation, for our protection, for of the forgiveness of our sins. We have to fully trust God in everything, okay? Because without trust, you cannot really follow God, amen? So I want to pray Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I want to proclaim it over our lives, Father. So we, I'm going to read this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we trust in the Lord with all our heart. And we lead not on our own understanding, Lord. But we lean on your wisdom, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Father. In all our ways, Father, we acknowledge you. And we thank you, Lord, as we acknowledge you and we, we surrender and we repent and we turn from our wicked ways, Lord. You're so loving and so faithful that you make a path straight, Father. And we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that you make a path straight, Father. Wow. Thank you, Father, that whenever we face a situation, whenever we face a decision, we do like Nehemiah when, when the king asked him that question, when he was trying to go back, to ask permission to go back to reveal the wall, he stopped, and he asked God had what he should answer the king. And you, Lord, gave him an answer, Father, that we have such a deep relationship with you, that we can connect with you 24-7, and I, I can be guided by the Holy Spirit in every situation, Father. We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you because we know that you guide every step of our lives. And we choose that and we surrender to that in the name of Jesus. So remember the, the question I ask you. Who are we following? Amen. And let's stop doing what 
we think is right in our own eyes, and let's start being guided by the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, shalomshalom.org, and subscribe, amen? And, I, and it's such a blessing because I get a lot of messages from people and I answer them back. Sometimes they give me their phone number and I'll call them. So if you have any questions, any prayer requests, please send them to us. This has been your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser and Reverend Dexter Pelser. God bless you and we'll see you next week. Shalom. <laughs>